because people can make all these excuses all they want to want, but that's not going to make them better. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for episode 13 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also the founder here at Whistlekick, the place for amazing sparring gear and really cool stuff for martial artists. If you're new to the show, you can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, and you can learn more about the show, including past episodes, show notes, and a lot more, at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. As a thank you for being an early listener to the show, we're going to give you 30% off any purchase at whistlekick.com. Just use the coupon code PODCAST1, that's podcast and the number one, at checkout. That code's only good for a couple more days through the end of June 2015. On today's show, we have Master Freddie LePan, a martial arts instructor, student, competitor, and school owner from Vermont. Master LePan is someone I've admired for many years, and I recently had a chance to sit down with him to get his story. Anyone that has ever met this man knows how dedicated to the martial arts he is, and I think that comes through here. His story is both inspiring and entertaining. So check it out. Master Freddie, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you very much. (laughs) Well, it's it's great to have you. Um, Listeners will be able to tell that we're actually in the same physical space. This isn't a Skype interview. The audio (laughs) quality is a little bit different. That's excellent. And this is always fun because I get to, you know, see people's reactions and, and know if I'm if I'm grilling them too hard. No. <laughs> of course, be fine. That doesn't happen. That's not my style, but uh, it's it's nice to have that that in person. Absolutely, touch. absolutely. So, um, well, let's jump right in. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your time in the martial arts? How how you got started? When you got started? Okay. Um, well, I actually originally started in the martial arts here, right in Barry under uh, Var- Valari's Martial Arts Studio. Uh, I was about 13 years old. How I originally got started um, is uh, I was a very hyperactive kid, you know, um, labeled uh, ADHD type deal. Sure. And uh, my sister actually, uh, the, the studio was very young. It just kind of opened up here in the Barry area, which, uh, um, this was back in 83 84 you know in that point so this martial arts studio has actually been in the city for 30 plus years you know in business so um but anyway she took martial arts like that and she came back and told my mother and she goes i think this would be the greatest thing for uh uh, freddie to be able to do and i've always wanted to do the martial arts but my mother was afraid to get me into it because they had that persona of you know oh wow you know this uh He's very active and be able to do this. He might use it the wrong way, you know, and that type of thing. Um, So she agreed and my sister said, you know, if he does this, I will, you know, help pay for him to be able to do that. And that's actually how I started my martial arts career at that point. And I've actually been doing it ever since from that day. Um, And I'm 44 years old now and uh, have never stopped. Um, I went from student to instructor to... um, uh, studio owner and uh, been doing it the whole time. So as I contributed, who got me actually started, it was my uh, sister, Joey Grandboys, who, um, you know, if I don't know if it wasn't for that day, she said this would be great for my brother. And uh, she never did that. I don't know if I'd be here today. <laughs> well, cool. So, so we, we owe sitting here right now to her. So that's, yeah, that's really cool. so <laughs> I guess thank, you could say that. Thank you to her. <laughs> Yeah, she's finally getting the credit she deserves. Absolutely, absolutely. On, on this on this podcast, that, you know, <laughs> sure, a, a few people will listen to. <laughs> um, that's great. So, thir- you know, thirty plus years within the same style, within the same system. Absolutely, and that's something that not a lot of people will say. I mean, there are people kind of bounce out and come back in and, and try different things. And what what has it been about the Valari system, the Shaolin Kempo system? or maybe just the school here in Vermont, you know, what pieces of it would you say kept you satisfied? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a great question. The thing I love about, which I didn't understand it when I was a kid, but as I, you know, um, was taking more martial arts classes and started to evolve and really understand the martial arts, um, one thing I loved about the Valari system that it was very, um, how you say free flowing in the sense where we weren't isolated in the sense of just a, a kick or a punch or so mm-hmm. and so forth. One thing that uh, Grandmaster Valari always emphasizes is the different ranges of fighting and how to actually um, move through those ranges seamlessly. 
in the sense from a kicking range to a punching range to a trapping range into a grappling range and to be able to flow in and out of those types of things. Sure. So that I found that very interesting. So with our art, I wasn't basically isolated in saying I'm just kicking or I'm just punching. I learned all aspects of the martial arts. And I've been with the Valario organization for, you know, um, from day one. And but that doesn't mean I haven't gone and trained with other people also sure. to expand my art, expand my knowledge. Um, I'm a, uh, my students know this and stuff. I'm a sponge. I will learn anything from me. I am always growing. I always feel if you're not growing, you're dying. Simple as that. Mm. So I'm always getting information and pulling it in, sorting it out and integrating it into, uh, um, you know, in my martial art. You know, it's one of those types of things where, you know, I love the traditional aspect, but I always feel that we should always be evolving too. So I guess, you know, you could say this is where tradition meets evolution, you know, mm. also in the martial arts. That would be, that's a great slogan. <laughs> could, you should use that. Uh, uh, it's one of my friends, but I always use it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you, you, I, I want to go back a little bit to that sponge thing sure, because sure. it's something that uh, personally for me really resonates. I, I like the idea, you know, I've always um, used the metaphor that martial arts, your martial arts experience, your training is kind of like a trivial, trivial pursuit wheel, sure. you know, and you're adding different wedges and the first place you train is usually your biggest piece, but you're constantly adding more pieces and it's never full, but you're trying to round that out as much as you can. So... Uh I guess I'll throw two questions at you. One, what would you say might be the biggest piece that you've gone elsewhere to bring in that you think has really benefited you? And two, what has been your, your favorite kind of non Bolari system thing that you've brought in? Okay. Um, Hopefully those questions make sense. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, First thing off is when, when anybody gets into martial arts, they have to have a good base. You know, the stronger your roots, the higher you're going to be able to grow. Sure. You know, it's kind of like they refer to it as the pyramid. The pyramid's base is a relationship of how high it can be before it gets an argument. you got a, a, a small base and then you bring up a, a high, it's going to blow over. You know, the lower the base, the higher things are going to be able to get. So I feel that you got to train first and get rooted into something before you actually move. I think sometimes nowadays people, you know, they jump around too much too fast. Mm. And then at that point they get confused. <laughs> you know, once you establish a base, then you can start pulling from the, you know, from other uh, things. And then that's when it actually makes sense to you in a sense, because your body's different than mine and sure. everybody else's yeah. and so on and so forth. And you're going to adapt to different things more than other people. And I, I talk about this in my classes a lot. So when, when we're exploring the martial arts, you know, you might love kicking, I might love punching, I'm going to teach it to you, so, so, so on and so forth. But, you know, we have to adapt to what our body actually feels naturally be able to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the martial arts, obviously, we got all these different aspects when you, you, when you say, um, you know, what how do you train or what other things do you bring in? I mean, we have forms and we have fighting, we have self-defense and we have sparring in the sports side of things or whatever, you know, I loved exploring all those types of things. Um, I love the self-defense aspects where I really, you know, gear into that. Um, and then I also love the sports side of it. Um, also, which I kind of, um, uh, uh really kind of, went to one side on that also yeah. okay and, and, and bringing that back so one of your questions was you know um what do you bring back into the studio when you know from influences yeah. and from other thing yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, I, I i can't pinpoint one specifically i mean i have an instructor that you know was uh um I, I guess I got to put it this way is I've come in so contact with so many people and explored so many ideas. I couldn't sit there and say, you know, this is one thing that I would value more than the other. I guess it's not particular things I brought back in the studio. I, I guess I'm, it, it's more influences in a sense through people okay. of, of, uh, um, 
that I bring back to the studio. A prime example is as I was coming up through the martial arts and I decided that I wanted to, um, I did well in the sport competition and in New England and stuff, but I actually wanted to make a decision in my life and to be able to go, okay, I love the competition aspect. I want to boost it up to the next level. What do I do from here? Mm. Okay. Um, I was, you know, going through New England doing martial arts tournaments and I was, you know, doing relatively, you would place in the top three, but I needed to bump it up. And sure. this is where I sought out in our style at that point. Um, how, how old are you? What rank are you at this time? Well, I, I started competition right off, you okay. know, so when I started, I'd be able to do that. And I, we did like in school stuff and then Valario organization stuff. And then I started hitting the open tournament stuff and started making friends from there and so on and so forth. And like I said, I always did well, but then I always admire these other people. You know, I kind of watched, uh, this was the era, you know, Billy Blanks was actually starting to mm. move out. I was watching this and then, um, sport karate got real big, you know, with, uh, mafia Holloway and Ronald and Donald Brady, o, Pedro Xavier, John Payton, you know, uh, Mike Conroy, all these guys, you know, yeah. the Paul Mitchell team was explored and then it yeah. just kind of started exploding at the point. And I said, this, this is awesome. This is what I want to get involved with, but I just, a skill level, I just wasn't there yet, you know? Yeah. So I sought out a guy named um, Bobby Lamatina. They also call him Tokyo Joe. Yeah, yeah. That's and how he I has his, yeah, Tokyo Joe Studios of Self Defense. Um, and uh, he used to be a Valaris, and he, he started doing his oh. other thing. All uh, also very successful. But I went down and uh, sorted it out with him, you know, and uh, asked him to actually teach me, you know. And it's ironic because uh, he was big in competition, and uh, he did well. And, but the thing that it, that it impressed me the most is, was the people he trained. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily him. The people he trained were good too, okay. you know? And that's where I'm like, okay, you know, if he can teach them, can he teach me, sure. you know? And I never forget the day where I went down there first off and, uh, well, I call him up, you know, we'd be able to do this. Sure, I'd be more than happy. So I show up at his dojo, not knowing to, what to expect or whatever. So we set up like an hour private before and then uh, sparring was right after. So uh, he talked to me what my goals were and I told him what he wanted to accomplish. And he says, you, you think you got it in you? And I said, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm ready to do this. So uh, for my hour private, he stuck me in front of uh, um, a heavy bag and uh, gave me a combination to work on and a little footwork thing. He says, okay, do it. So, uh, all right, so I'm boom, 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 you know, five minutes go by, 10 minutes go by. <laughs> keep going <laughs> all right so probably about 45 minutes or so go by same combination yeah. same thing so on and so forth and i'm saying geez you know so this is my first time i think all right you know um then uh sparring time came and uh he took a hold of me and just, I got kicked from one side of the dojo <laughs> to the other. I never forget because he, there was this half wall oh. that he had. And uh, he had me going backwards and I was leaning right against it. And then flying psychic, boom, over the wall I oh. went, come back up and back over. And he says, you still want to? Yeah, yeah, I'm back in there and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, so we left and I'm, you know, I'm driving home thinking, I said, my God, <sighs> I mean, I took a, that was a beating, <laughs> you know? And I said, see you next week. <laughs> okay, so I did. And after a month of training of the same thing kind of going over, it was kind of ironic because now, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. he was yeah. testing me. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him my goals. I told him what I wanted to accomplish. And uh, he wanted to make sure I wasn't wasting his time, you know? And, and he knew it was gonna be a hard battle for, uh, to me to get where I wanted to be. So, you know, he wanted to test my perseverance a little bit, yeah. you know, and make sure it's something I did want. But I showed up every week, took his instruction, did exactly what he uh, told me to do, and come right back and off we did it again. So as in like my sport karate type of career right now, I owe it to him because uh, um, I brought back so when you sit there and say what I bring back to my studio, I brought back the, uh, that experience okay. to my students, you know, um, the knowledge that he sat there and be able to, you know, to give me at that point, you know, that stuff, the, um, 
you know, the determination, that type of stuff. And I try to portray that to them as me as an example and say, if I can do this, you can do this, sure. you know? And uh, um, because I'm not, you know, overly stop with height or anything like that, you know, whatsoever, um, you know, and I'm not from a big city or anything like that, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a lot of heart to be able to reach the goals that you want to be able to get, you know, so, you know, in that, so in that aspect is, I know your question was, you know, from the outside influences coming in. So I can't say it's a particular technique. I learned this grappling thing and I brought it back here, but it's just the total experiences of all the people that I've brought in and into my life. And I still associate with as in sponging and then taking that information and just portraying it to my students and letting them, uh, how do you say, helping them with their journey through the martial arts, mm. you know, yeah. and uh, helping them any way you can, because everybody's battles a little bit different. Everybody comes to the martial arts for a different reason. And this is where um, I help them try to experience that, you know, and figure it out. Great. And, you know, the whole point of this, this podcast is to get people to tell stories. The questions are really about, you know, just kind of helping people along, pulling the stories out of them. And that, that was a great story. I, could, I, I felt like I was there with you. You know, I've, I've, I've met this man, you know, many years ago and, and I could just see you getting kicked over the wall. And, and I was, you may have noticed, I was cringing a little bit, you know, imagining that as, I mean, how, how old were you at that point? Oh, I was, I was, you know, early twenties, okay, you know, so. at, at that point. I mean, I was a, a young man so, yeah. and that stuff, but yeah, I mean, so he just showed me something. It just brings back another thing. I mean, he has this like throne chair sitting in his dojo at that yeah. point, which of course I come in, I've never seen anything like that or whatever. I don't know. I was sparring, blah, blah, blah. I was tired. I sat in it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mr. LePan, could you please get up and give me a hundred push-ups, please? Oh. He said, no one sits in my chair. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. didn't sit in the chair again. <laughs> no, absolutely. That was lesson learned, you know? Yeah. And just as I say to my students, you know, everybody makes mistakes in their lives. We figure out what we did. We correct them. That's what we call experience. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> well, you've already told us, you know, a couple great stories there. Yep. But... If you would, were to pick out the one that you would say is your best, your best story, the one that you, you know, reserve for, I don't know, trying to one up people around a campfire or something. Oh, you know, I don't know about one and up <laughs> <laughs> about anything. I mean, stories are, uh, um, it, I know. I mean, you got serious ones, funny ones and all that type of stuff. I mean, I know there was one, it was actually, it was competition wise. This is as I was, you know, this was probably in my twenties too and stuff. Um, and I was getting into forms and stuff, but it, you know, it was started to get that little evolve where people were starting to do acrobatics and stuff mm. like that. I said, I'm doing an aerial cartwheel. That's all there is to it. <laughs> you know, so I'm learning to do this. So, uh, I'm learning and I go, head over tea kettle and I land on my toe and busted it. Oh. Boom. I mean, it's, I don't know if I busted it, whatever, but it just like swollen all up and so on and so forth. And I got a comp. Now what happens here is now I got a competition within like four days and it was the Boston internationals. I never forget it. And then I can hardly walk. So, you know, I get suggestions from, you know, everybody to be able to do this, but I end up going to a chiropractor and uh, he had a, uh, herbologist there and uh, uh he also did acupuncture mm -hmm. so they stuck some needles in my toe put some electricity on it and then ironically i mean it was nice it, it actually brought the swelling down yeah. you know so i was able to walk on it so i get down and we're in boston and uh i'm walking around and at this point i had one of my uh, students my wife with me and uh, we're walking around but, but i couldn't get a shoe on <laughs> So it was funny because I had one flip flop on and when there I'm walking around Boston, you know, to tournament and uh, what happens and it just seemed like every, I don't know, you sit there and say person or people, street people, whatever. Hey, dude, you all right? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm limping and walking and stuff. But of course it was a beautiful thing because they had a Valari tournament the first day and then they had an open tournament the next day. So it was a, a Saturday, Sunday type yeah. of uh, event. But even with the hurt toe, I was able to, I got first in both <laughs> and stuff. So I don't know. It's wow. uh, I, I just thought it was a, a funny story in the sense where, you know, 
you're getting hurt, you're trying to make the comeback, you know, even people you don't even know were concerned for you the way you were walking and acting, right. you know, but you know, you still persevered. So <laughs> and how about that aerial cartwheel? Did you? I finally nail nailed it. <laughs> I finally nailed it. I actually put it in a few forms and learned the back handspring and stuff like that. But then, I mean, as anybody kind of sees nowadays, the the extreme forms and stuff like that yeah. i just and this is the thing about competition you know me i think about weapons forms and fighting in a sense and, and i used to do all three you know yeah. bow staff was my preferred weapon at that point i learned and so on and so forth but as in running a full-time martial arts studio trying to train my self and uh and to be able to be good at all three of these which that was the thing I could be good at all three, but I couldn't be great at one. Mm. I needed to pick one that I could actually excel in. Now you have these prodigies that can just, you know, they do their forms and they do weapons and those, you know, hand, I'm just not one of those people. I just could not balance doing all three of those type of things. So I picked the one that I actually loved the most and did the most. And that's when I went into the, the, the sport fighting type aspect of it and really spent most of my time in that avenue. Yeah. So. <gasps> At what point would you say you you chose to specialize? Um, well, it, it was a small evolution. I used to do like you know you know the weapons for, it, and then, then I dropped the weapon, and then I just started doing forms, you know, in fighting, and then eventually, what started to happen as uh, the forms. I can't sit there and say they started changing in the sense where you know I had the acrobatics and stuff, and I tried to get in and be able to do a little bit of it. But I could see where it was going a little bit. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I just don't want to spend the time doing that. You know, I took gymnastics classes and stuff like that. It's just, it's just not, I want to spend more time doing that. So um, then when we went to tournaments like in NBL tournaments and stuff like that had specific tempo divisions, I usually always entered that because okay. you're on a level playing field about, you know, um, when you're doing a tempo form. Sure. <laughs> um, so that... I stayed pretty consistent with, but um, then eventually that just kind of died off and I s specifically went straight into, um, uh, you know, the sport aspect of it, you know, and then that's when I started fighting, you know, um, for, you know, professional martial arts teams, you know, and got on teams and got sponsored and things like that. And that's when it kind of, that's where I really kind of isolated and just, because that's what they had me on the team for. Sure. Your division, your fighting, that's what it is, <laughs> you know, so. <gasps> cool. Yeah. So this has been quite a journey. I mean, we've kind of wandered through a bunch of things. Sure, and, sure, and sure. Certainly, you know, the martial arts has been the majority of your life. Mm -hmm. So try and think about what your life might have been without martial arts and, and of course, how it is now. And how would you say you've benefited? How is Freddie a different person because of his time in the martial arts? Well, I, I came to a crossroads when I was actually, when I, uh, I made a choice in high school. <clears throat> um, you know, I actually went to Chelsea High School and of course the studio was in Barrie. So there was a long distance to be able to part. So a lot of times I just loved doing the martial arts. So I mean, I'd get home, get my stuff done, my homework, whatever the case, and then head down to the martial arts studio. I was down here four or five times a week, so on and so forth, yeah. you know, training and stuff. Um, in high school, I kind of said, you know, I think this is something I want to do, you know, for my life. So actually in high school, I actually had the mind frame of, you know, I want to own a martial arts studio. And so I took business courses and things like, like that. And then I got out of, you know, high school and I actually did have to sit there and say to myself, all right, what am I going to do in my life? You know, I always was interested in law enforcement. So I had, you know, relatives that uh, were in the state police and stuff like that. And they... Um, I was thinking about the opportunity, maybe going that way, going to college, you know, for criminal justice or something, be able to do that. And sure. then I'm thinking about the martial arts. But the thing that was always in the back of my head was, you know, if I start focusing my energy over there, this energy right here is going to, you know, drop. I'm not going to meaning the law. If you focused on the law enforcement and stuff, then, right? Yeah. My martial arts is going to go down, and that was always like an inner fight. I was mm. sitting there thinking, "All right, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to lose my martial arts. I just loved it so much." Sure. And then that's when I just finally made the decision. You know what? 
I'm going to do this, you know. So I was about 19, 20 years old. That's when I actually bought, you know, the the, the license from Valaris here wow. at this point and then started my business, you know, at that point and then been doing it here actually ever since. I bought it from my original instructor. His name was, uh, well, I can say my original. My original instructor was uh, Brian and Tammy Hartwell. And they're the ones that actually started that in the um, Barry area. Mm-hmm. And uh, a man named Don Ruthier picked it up after that, and I took lessons out from that. And then after I bought this studio and stuff, I really um, Lori Shover from um, Master Shover from South Burlington and uh, Master David Boyce from Plasma, New York. They really took me under my wing and helped me out with the business aspect mm-hmm. and the the uh, um, the Shaolin Temple Karate. You know, they guided me tremendously. You know, at that point, and then when I started to branch out. Um, that's when, you know, uh, Bobby Lamatina came in my life and, uh, Mike Conroy came into my life. He's from uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. He's been in the coach of, uh, my sport karate teams in a sense. So I owe a lot of my success to him also, you know, he's always took me under his wing and, uh, we work good together. <clears throat> so. You know, if I wasn't doing the martial arts, I probably would have explored some law enforcement type of thing, yep. you know, in, in that type of stuff. But, you know, as on how I benefited, you know, from the martial arts, I mean, it just gave me so much f- focus and uh, um, just meeting the, the, the great people in my life. I mean, I just love meeting people and knowing that I'm actually having a positive impact mm-hmm. Yeah, in their life and having a positive impact in the community. I mean, this is just a, a feeling that, uh, um, you know, it's just overwhelming sometimes. It's uh, knowing that you can get up, go to work and actually do your passion. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's great. So, um, I don't know. It's just, uh, it, it, as I mentioned before, everybody's on their own little journey in life and I, love knowing that I'm actually in that timeline at some point and hopefully being something positive to them, you know, and especially in kids. I mean, it's getting to the point now where I'm actually teaching kids of kids (laughs) that I've taught, you know, and it's great because they're saying, Oh, we had such a great experience here. I want my child to experience you also, you know, that's just a great feeling. Absolutely. I mean, what, what better testimonial, Sure. Can someone give you then to say, yeah, I want you to teach my kid. Absolutely. You know, it's the, it's uh you know, it's a point in my life where I'm actually trying to, um, you know, build my legacy, I guess a little bit, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a good feeling that I've had came in contact with all these people in my life and, uh, you know, my staff, you know, is absolutely, and that's one thing, you know, I can not, you know, can, I would not be able to do or experience the things that I do now or before if I did not have a good group of people around me. Like like this being a full-time martial arts studio and I have to go travel and do something, sure. I have to step out of here, yeah. you know? And this studio runs like clockwork, you know? And, stuff, and I contribute to the people that are here that be able to do this. Um, get like a, a Sensei Mindy Anthony, I mean, she, she calls me, she, and we, inside joke but she's uh, i'm uh she's my office wife <laughs> you know she always keeps my ducks in a row and she makes her the point in the right direction you yeah. know be able to do this but i she's always here she needs help anything i need you know um you know gordon pat no uh, daniel zuniak uh, eugene tardy uh, uh robin dakota dylan abier uh scott grainer um if uh um you know, even I have other black belts, like if I need help or something, I need a class cover to something short notice, like a Dennis Ducharme, he would be able to do that. Um, you know, if I need computer work, I have another, you know, and stuff, you know, Tony Morris, I can pull him in. I got, you know, kids helping out like a Bon Lafayette or Kate Norwood. These are all people that come in and help me out with my classes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then, you know, my son, he's, you know, he's 15 years old now. He just got his third degree black belt, cool. you know, he's, Sensei Frederick, now he loves that, <laughs> having the title. But it's now it's, I can actually start working side by side with my son, mm. you know. And What's that like? It, oh, it's an absolutely unbelievable experience, you know, in the sense where I'm taking all the, the things that I've learned and I'm trying to 
you know, bring it to him. And of course, he's a teenager too, you sure. know, and, you know, he experiences teenager things and he's growing. But, you know, my whole thing is, you know, I'm got to mold him into a man, you know, in, in that sense. And I'm doing it the best of my ability. And uh, not every parent gets a chance where their child can actually work with them side by side, yeah. you know, in a business. And I just cherish those moments. You and know? in a business that you love and, oh, and he loves too. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And, you know, and he does a great job, you know, be able to do this, you know, at 15 years old, you know, so... Does he want to open a dojo someday? Oh, I don't know. You know, whatever he wants to do, I will support him. <laughs> but the point being is, is he's down here in a positive atmosphere, also being a positive influence sure. to other people too, yeah. you know? Um, you know, all martial artists, we have a job in a sense where the people that we come in contact with into the community or anything like that, these people are going to be you know, especially these kids are going to be our future leaders someday. These are the people who are going to be running our communities. These are the people that are going to be working in jobs and so on and so forth. So the point being is the stronger we can make these children, these people in our community, of course, as they grow up, the, the stronger it's going to be, right. you know? So, you know, it's, uh, um, everybody does their part, <laughs> you know, absolutely. <laughs> cool. You've got quite the team. I, I... That was a lot of names. <laughs> so, I, and there's more, and I'm I, sorry if yeah, I didn't mention I, anybody else <laughs> <laughs> I, and stuff. I mean, I got a lot of students, a lot of people sit there and help me out. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, you know, there's, uh, you know, another person that, you know, just comes to mind is uh, her name's Phyllis Stork. You know, she's been with me for years upon years. She's a, you know, six degree black belt. And uh, she's been a big influence in my life, just in, in the sense where, you know, she comes in every Saturday at nine o'clock. She has her, that's her private lesson time. And there's times we just sat there and talked about life, um, how, you know, the brain works, mm -hmm. how, you know, to perseverance and discipline and all that type of stuff. And I taught both their, ch her children, which are, you know, black belts, uh, also in just, uh, she's such a down to earth woman. And she's actually set my mind straight many, many of times, you know, this is where sometimes the teacher must become the student <laughs> and uh, she is a wise woman and uh, I take her opinion you know very heavily you know I, I really listen to what she has to say cool. and stuff so yeah it's nice to have people like that around you oh absolutely keep yeah. you honest mm -hmm. keep you honest. <laughs> yeah she what does they call it keeps it real yeah, <laughs> yeah so <sighs> so I'd like you to think about a point in your life that maybe things got a little challenging a little rough that you worked through, overcame, you know, whatever words are applicable, and how your martial arts experience and training enabled you to move past that point or overcome that challenge. Oh, geez. <laughs> More than one. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll only make you do one. All right. Well, in my life, in a sense where I've been plagued with injuries <laughs> and it just seems just when I get started and rolling on something something's be able to happen I mean this one might be a little bit long-winded because you know it is I get going in my martial arts career which is you know going and then I'm, I'm going to talk to, about the sports aspect of okay. this right now sure. and stuff first thing I never forget it first off Rutland Vermont boom 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 fighting at a tournament bang guy lands on my leg dislocates it <laughs> Tears my ACL out. Of course, me being a little bit stubborn, I don't go get it checked out. I'll heal, don't worry. <laughs> da, 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 da. So I let it go for a while, but it just kept going out, going out, going out. Finally go to the doctors. Well, your ACL's gone. You know, your miscus is all made up. So we get an operation. Long story short, not a big deal. All right, get back. You should get that ACL fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to time. This, this is my mentality back then. It's like, well, that means I'm going to be out for six months. I can't do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So to this day, I still haven't got it fixed, <laughs> I know what it like. but, um, so I had to restart. So throughout the times that at this point, my knee was giving me issues. It would pop out. Never forget. I was fighting down at the empire state nationals. Sit down, you know, I'm fighting. Boom. Knee pops out. I feel it out. Can't get on it. So. Now I'm fighting for first and second, going into the grands. I'm up on points. If I bow out, I'm done. Right. So, and there's like 30 seconds left. So I sit there, put my leg down there, 
boom, hit it as hard as I can, snap it back into place. <laughs> I said, all I got to do is dance around for, you know, a few seconds. So one, when you're saying the, what the martial arts has done for you, there's a perseverance, there's a discipline, there's the mental aspect of it. Was it the smartest thing? No, probably not. <laughs> but no, but you had a goal. You had something that was, I had that to was get important. Exactly. To you. And, yep. and you were going to, you did what you had to do. I had, did okay. what I had to do. Got it out, boom, ended up winning that. So, okay. so and so. Got that looked at at that point, boom, they try to fix it up the best they can. <sighs> then another time, then that second operation. Now the third time, sparring down here, come up, boom, legs locked. <laughs> I was like, oh, something happened. Another piece of meniscus or whatever got torn and got jammed in there. <laughs> Couldn't walk. Went to the doctors the next day, emergency surgery within a day. <laughs> you know, they had to, because I couldn't move my leg. It was sure. just so and so forth. They fixed that. That was the last knee up. She actually did a great job there. <laughs> it's been holding up pretty good since there. But she just says, you're just going to have to strengthen that knee so hard, so tight mm -hmm. that, that it just holds, you know. And so that, to this day, I just emphasize, you know, exercises on that uh, particular thing. So I got all through that, but it, it's start and stop. Injury, get going. Injury, get going. Injury, get going. So it's kind of like I'm always starting from scratch again, you know? Yeah. So martial arts career is going very well. Um, you know, late 20s, been on uh, many martial arts teams, you know, between uh, Trade Wins, TDS Telecom, Team Elite, Team CGB. And uh, then that was my last team uh, at that point was uh, Team CJB. And uh, fighting well, top of my game, and then I, my hip started to feel a little, mm. you know, off. And I'm like, geez, you know. Now at this point, I'm very early 30s, you know, I'm 31, 32, or so on and so forth. And I'm fighting through the pain, and I'm doing you know, this. And long story short, uh, you know, this is around when my daughter was kind of young and born, and so I was going to say, I'm going to take a, you know, a good first part of the martial arts. Um, tournaments because uh, at this time I was traveling all over every uh, it was usually once or twice a month I was flying somewhere around the United States you know competing yep. somewhere but you know um, I had two kids at this point I said let me just spend some time at home with my kids and so on and so forth and get back into it and I never forget it, it was me getting back I'm like all right the Diamond Nationals are coming I have to start getting in shape and just for some reason you know my hips were not working the way they were supposed to so long story short you know, I fought through it, went at the Diamonds, and uh, then uh, did uh, Panama City down at the NBL, so on and so forth. And uh, then after that, I was like, man, this is just working too hard. Something's wrong. So I went to the doctors and said, I had bone spurs all over my hips. Ooh. And it wasn't anything from the martial arts. They just say it was genetic. They're okay. just saying that's just the way it is. She says, you would have had this problem sometime in your life. You know, it happened in your 30s. It could have happened in your 40s. It could have happened in your 50s. It didn't matter, so okay. on and so forth. But at this point, the way the technology was, they said, you're just going to have to, uh, well, you can get hip surgery and replacements and so on and so forth. But this is, you know, if you're in your early 30s, at this time, the technology, you're only lasting 10 years or something like right. that. And they're thinking you can only have them like twice in your life. And you're going to have to wait. <sighs> so that was a very emotional part of my life because something I loved just got pulled right out from under me. I couldn't compete. You know, I could I have competed? Yes. Could I compete at the level I wanted to? Right. No. So I kind of just focused on the martial arts here. and But, you know, you have that pull like, oh, I just want to get back in the ring. I just sure. want to get back in the ring. And I was just going through some excruciating pain because, of course, they, they're like, put up with it as long as you can. Because they're telling you basically at that point that you get 20 years. Yeah. from what As soon as you give up on the pain, you get 20 years and then yeah. it's gonna, you're going to have the pain on the backside of your life. When you've already got all those other challenges. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just that. You, know, you get a fix, you got that, so and so forth, and you know, and you're gonna have to get it replaced again. And they just want you to hold it out as long as you can so you don't have to keep replacing it, you know. Especially me being active. Sure. You know. So on the other side of this, um, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm running my martial arts studio, doing everything I can, and great staff, everybody's every I mean, it's going well. Don't yeah. you don't get me wrong, but it's just I wanna get back in that ring. But also, it got to a point where I could hardly walk. I couldn't kick. I couldn't mm. move. You know, it was the defining moment. Never forget it. I was up at uh, Champlain Valley Fair. Had my friend, my my child, um, my son. I think it was his birthday party or something like that. In, in the sense where he had some friends over. Every hundred yards, I had to sit down. Mm. 
I had to sit down. I just could not take it anymore. I said, I have to do something about it. And for people that aren't uh, local to the area, it's, it's a state fair. Yeah, and yeah. Fairgrounds are pretty wide, and there's a lot of great stuff to see. So, you know, you were probably sitting down quite a bit. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was it was the quality of life. I said, this is no way. This is time. To be How long had it been? It. About seven years. Okay. Yeah. So it, it was it was a while, and then uh, I went in and got. I went to a doctor, and they said they were gonna. They took my worst hip, which was my left side. Let's scope it. Let's take the bone spurs out. And let's see what we can do. And it just didn't work. And then I uh, went to uh, down in Hanover to another doctor and they said, you know, we're fix both these right at the same time. Ba ba ba, get them right in there. So we did. And uh, they felt good, you know, at that point. And then at that point, it started, the problem was, is me letting them go for so long, my whole gait in my body, you know, my skeletal structure switched. Yep. So it wasn't like they got fixed and ta-da, I'm right. back up. I mean, I had to retrain everything. My flexibility wow. was shot. My walking was wrong. I mean, it just, it took me a while to actually get, get back to where I was going. But the six months after the surgery, I was back at my first tournament. You know, I, that's yep, pretty impressive. I was fighting down in, uh, um, New Haven, Connecticut, at, uh, in a tournament down there and uh, got back, it was, you know, I got first in my division, you know, going back, you know, after not having competed in nope. almost eight years. Yep. Yep. Got back. That was my first tournament, got things going, you know, um, and then it was an evolution for me within those last three years to get everything back, straightened out my flexibility, so on and so forth. But the thing about it is my right hip after it was fixed, it just didn't, it felt good, but it just didn't feel like 100%, so on and yeah. so forth. And I was actually, um, this was about a year ago. Well, my point being is, is me have to come back. This is what's my comeback, you know? Yeah. Let's let's go. This is my perseverance, my discipline. This is it. Let's get going again, you know? Then I'm down at uh, Who's on Alexander's Tournament in Springfield, Mass, fighting in the Grands. Yeah. And I pushed off and something went when my right hip, which I thought was a pulled muscle. Well, come to find out, well, I let it go for five months, <laughs> thinking it will heal, I do this, I do that, so on and so forth. Go back to the doctor, he's gonna look, he says, you broke, basically the way the, the bolt and the hip replacement was in there, broke. Wow. And he said, I was walking around for a dislocated hip for about five months, you know, and uh, he was like, you gotta get surgery immediately. <laughs> So within four days, I was under the thing and they went on it. So here it is. I got to start over again, <laughs> you know, but beautiful. The technology had nowadays, it was uh, uh, very minimal. You know, okay. I actually had a full, they took everything out, replaced everything in on a Thursday. I was back to work teaching karate on Monday wow. with no, um, you know, crutches or anything like that and within a couple months i was back fighting again me restarting so now i'm getting my goals here ready to go again and uh at this point um now i was going to go fight in portugal and i for the iska here at the end of may and then training boom tore my tendon off my bicep <laughs> That was my latest operation. <laughs> so they just had to fix that up and me get going again. So <laughs> I guess the point is, is uh, I've been a very start and stop, <laughs> you know, get going and then something pulled me back. But, uh, you know, as they always sit there and say, it's, you know, it's, I keep getting put down, but it's like, I keep getting back up, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's where the martial arts teaches me, the, the benefits, you know. I've always said this, and I actually was talking about my students this the other day. The last thing I ever want to be in my life is what they call an armchair general. <laughs> so me walking around there and say, if it's hard and this challenge is in front of you, you got to drive through it and you can't quit and you can't do that and you need to keep a good attitude the whole time. I preach this to my students all the time. It's like when my arm just went, you know. That was my test. Right. to them to sit there and say okay master freddy has been training this he's been looking forward to this he's ready to go he's going to do that bang he did it was i disappointed absolutely was i kind of crushed sure but now the decision was this do i keep a great attitude get this fixed move forward or do i dwell on it and 
you know, make everybody else's lives miserable because right. I'm in a bad mood or anything like that. No, I mean, there was the crossroad. This is my attitude and I'm going to have to move forward with it. And I sat there and talked about it. And I also said that to all the kids. This is my test now. And mm. I'm going to show the example of how a martial artist should act when disappointment comes in their lives. And, uh, you know, it was good. I brought it to his attention so they could actually see, see this, you know, so... Yeah, that's so as in when your original questions, how it benefited me, I guess just perseverance in life. <laughs> you know, if something puts you back down, get back up, go forward, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that's, it, it's pretty impressive. Most people don't come back to any kind of athletic career from one of those injuries. I mean, maybe the bicep stuff, but I, I can't say I know too many athletes in other sports that compete at the level that you compete at that have fake hips no oh, yeah sure i mean you're you're, you're, you're the, the bionic man for uh, sure yeah and i even within that period too i got in a car accident and broke my neck <laughs> you know and then they had to put metal in my neck for that one too that was another job i forget about that <laughs> you know so, so. It, it sounds like the takeaway definitely is you know if you want something bad enough you know regardless of what the what life is throwing at you you can you can certainly move through that and absolutely and yeah i think that the martial arts is something that you know, teaches us how to work through those obstacles. So um, those are some great examples of, of how to move forward. <laughs> sure. So we've talked about a lot of the people that have had an influence in your life, your instructors and, and secondary instructors and your sister. Yep. Um, but I'd like you to think of the one person other than those people you would call your instructor, your senseis. What one person would you say has had the most influence, the most perhaps inspiration or, or however you want to term it through your martial arts career? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it's such a hard question because, you know, you have through my martial arts career, you have so many people that come through your life that support you in different ways. Yeah. And they, and, and where you are in your martial arts career or what you're doing right there, you have different people that support you in that period of life. You know what I'm saying? They're not necessarily, you know, supporting you. Not to say they're not supporting you, but it's just you didn't, you don't need them at that, this point, you know. And it, it, you know, if you think about the evolution of what's going on, you know, I, you know, okay, well, think about the person that was from day one, my mother. Sure. There you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, she's probably been my biggest fan. So when you say someone that supported me through my martial arts career, when I started my martial arts studio with no business experience or anything like that, she was supportive. That's what you want to do. Let me do it. So to this day, she does my book work for me. Oh, you that's know? great. Yeah, she comes in and cleans the martial arts studio, you know, and that type of stuff. She's uh, always been interested and in, done everything she can to support me in the martial arts, as yeah. in paying for my classes and stuff. And her being a single mother at, at that point, I mean, it was hard for her. But yeah. she always put me forward, making sure that I was experienced what I needed to experience. If I needed to go to a martial arts a tournament and stuff, the money was found that I was be able to go. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, it's funny now because, you know, she, uh, she's seen me go through this evolution of my, she's always, of course, me getting hurt. She's always been there. My operations, there she was, there's my mom, <laughs> you know, uh, that type of stuff. She wasn't telling you to stop. Nope. No, 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 not at all. She tells me I should gain weight, but <laughs> that's about it. You know, but no, she, that. no, no, she's never told me she should stop. But the beautiful thing about it is now that my son is starting to, you know, get more involved in martial arts, I'm starting to see that her into him. You know, mm. he just recently, you know, fought at a, uh, uh, in the men's division up here at a local martial arts tournament and won the grand championship. And uh, she had tears in her eyes. Oh, cool. You know, seeing, her grandson be able to, you know, evolve like that, yeah. you know, maybe I'm old news to her now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's to be able to do that. So I'm going to say from day one, it's my mother. And it's probably, I mean, there's so many other people too, oh, yeah. you know, oh, to be able to do that. I mean, even, 
you know, in different periods, you know, when the kids were young, my wife was able to take care of them, you know, at that point, which so I could be able to go out and other people took care of the martial arts studio, you know? So like I said, it's so many other people at that point, but you know, <laughs> you're, you're certainly blessed. I mean, I've, you know, done a number of these interviews now and no one else has, has talked about as large a circle of people around them, supporting them. Oh. As you've had, and I, that's and I can't get enough blessing. credit. I, you know what? And you even want to put the circle even bigger? Parents, yeah. kids, students. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here either. Right. <laughs> you know, sure. I mean, I like to think that I'm offering a valuable service to them. You know, in that type of sense, and uh, you know, they keep coming back, so I'm, you know, it's good. But you know, I owe it to them too. You know, right. it's just, I don't think they get enough credit. I'm always thanking the parents for bringing their kids, you know, uh, to be able to do, you know, the martial arts. You know, I s always say this to the martial arts is a special thing. Not every kid gets to do it. So if right. your parents were able to afford to bring you to classes and take the time to bring you to classes and yard them all over the place and make sure that they're there, I mean, you got to hand it to them. I wish I could give, you know, the parents, you, you really think about that through the time from a child starts until when they get their black belt, what is it, three, four, five, six years, depending on, you know, their abilities. Okay, whatever. You have a parent or a grandparent or something that is doing that through them. I mean, they deserve a black belt too. <laughs> they're in their video and they're taking notes Absolutely. and practicing. I mean, it's just, I cannot thank them enough, you know, for this. So, I mean, it's a wide circle. <laughs> So we talked a, a lot about through these other questions about your time in competition and how important that is to you. Um, so I'm going to reframe the question from what I normally ask at this point. What do you love about martial arts competition? Love about competition. I love the battle of minds. Okay. <laughs> so let me put it this way and kind of put it in present. I don't, perceive it as just kicking punching at each other in a sense it's your mind against my mind strategery there's no different if we put a chessboard in front of us and we went at it okay it's just that we do it with our hands and feet <laughs> so if i'm in a martial arts competition and i'm going against you at this point you are promote you're giving me some type of situation you are giving me some type of problem all right if it's with a kick or a punch or your movement or something like that it's up to me to be able to figure that problem out and then come up with a solution <clears throat> you know and vice versa sure now this is where the battle of the mind is. this is where the chess game starts because you come in and you give me that problem i figure out a solution now you just adapt to my solution. Now you just gave me a new problem. <laughs> now my mind has to work again, sure. you know, and that's the constant movement of the chessboard of way the game goes and stuff. So when I sit there and say about what I love, I love the physical aspect of it. You know, I mean, I, probably couldn't sit there and do chess as long <laughs> as I could spar because I love the physical aspect of it. But it's a battle of minds. You really think about it, it is. Yeah. And uh, that's that's what I love about it. I mean, it's just the whole strategy of what goes on. And I'm always thinking how to improve and what is that of a person thinking and what can I do to counteract that? I mean, it's just constant, constant. I mean. I mean, this is, I have this here. I mean, I'm constantly looking at it. The people that train with me, they know about this. I always have a Rolodex. Yep. <laughs> and these are moves and peoples to counteract. If this person's doing this, I mean, if you're a left leg kicker, these are my counters to this, uh -huh. blah, blah, blah. I am always studying. If you are, <laughs> if you're a right leg kicker, this, these are my counters. I always have your strategic. If you're a right puncher or a left how puncher. How long have you done that? Oh, geez, I can't even remember and stuff i even have my offenses and defensive moments and then i even have you evaluated as a fighter i have your name in here and i know exactly what you do and how you do it and i watch you and even people that haven't even fight i watch them and i take notes on them and i fight them in my head many of times mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when i get in front of them and it's Almost like, okay, they should be doing this, 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 and this, and this. These are what I should be doing here, here, and here. On an unconscious level, of course. I, you sure. can't do that much thinking in the ring. If sure. I can lock it in now and then it, it let it out instinctual, you know, when you're in the ring, that's the ultimate goal. 
Now, does it work all the time? No. <laughs> you know, and we all win and we all lose and so on and so forth. But that's the fun of the game. Right. You get in there, you do this, you win or lose. Say I got points scored upon me or I lose my match or whatever. I get back and I scratch my head and I say, all right, this is what happened. Yeah. This is the evaluation. What do I do to fix this? Right. Now we're back to the drawing. We do training and now we go back and we're going to test the skill again. You know, this is what I think about competition. The days of, oh, I want to win or I want to lose. But I can't sit there and say, everybody wants to win. Right. Don't get me wrong. You want to win, everybody wants to win, so on and so forth. But I feel the true essence of competition is the evaluation of yourself. So when I actually go in and f to a martial arts tournament, you know, I have the determination to win to be able to do that. But personally, when I walk out of that ring, I want to be able to feel good about myself. There was absolutely nothing more I could have done. Mm. That person beat me because they were better that day. And how do you feel when that happens? When, which? when, when you give your all and somebody still oh, takes it to you. That's it. <sighs> I hand it, shake their hand, <laughs> high five. And now it's, this is where you, the inner voice has to pop in, yeah. you know, and sometimes you got to shut it up. <laughs> the inner voice tries to throw out excuses. Right. Oh, the judges didn't see this or the judge, you know, or the time limit there or the, the mat was slippery or whatever like that. And you got to sit there and say, be quiet. You know what? You got to get back to the drawing board and you got to figure this out and you got to get back in. And that's where the champion's mind comes in because people can make all these excuses all they want to win, but that's not going to make them better. Right. You know, it's either, I've always found you can make an excuse or you can make progress. You can't have both, <laughs> you know, I can get back to the studio, make all these excuses and do nothing. <laughs> so, you know, you come back, get back into it, make that progress, figure out what's going on and get back to the drawing board and see what happens. That's how you grow. That's the evaluation process. You know, I do it with sport karate, you know, and other people would do it with other things. And I don't care if it's, you know, track or basketball or anything. There's always that going on, you know? So I just choose the martial arts to do that whole process. <laughs> wow, that would... You keep throwing out these gems, you know, li listeners don't, don't get to see this, but I keep paper and jot down, you know, if you've listened to the show, you know that there's a quote that comes before. So your quote, you know, at, at this point, when people are hearing me say this, they'll all already have heard the, whatever the piece I'm going to carve out and throw at the beginning of the oh, episode yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never had this many written down <laughs> in the middle. You know, usually I have one or two good choices and, and you just keep throwing me gold. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. You're a very quotable man. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Well, I always say originality is concealing your source. <laughs> Remember, I was a sponge, right? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you've already trained with a lot of great people, but if you could train with someone that you haven't, be they living or dead, who who would you want to work oh, out Jesus. with? Oh, Jesus. Well, you can, you, you can go with... I mean, there's a lot of people that I love training with, you know, like a, Mike Conroy, Bobby Lamatina, Jody Tension, Ross Levine. These are all great competitors that I'd love to train, you know, love training with sure. now and doing that type of stuff. But um, if I was to go back and just sit there, and these are the people. One cliche is the Bruce Lee. Sure. <laughs> Who wouldn't? And there's a reason for that. And the other one would be Joe Lewis. Um, Why Joe Lewis? Strategery. Okay. This man was above his time. He was, these are the two reasons between the two. Joe Lewis was a very strategic guy. I, you know, I always, uh, I've met him a few times and I've never been able to experience one of his seminars, but I had a lot of his tapes and, you know, DVDs and things like that to be able to watch. But this guy was a very intellectual, you know how we talked about the minds yeah. and that type of stuff. He was very in tune to that. You know, I do this because of this. And, and especially when I teach uh, my classes, it's, uh, I'm very strategic in the yeah. sense that I do things for a reason and say, this is the reason I'm doing this because of this or this because of that or so on and so forth. There's always a reason behind it, you know? And if I do something and then it really doesn't start to work, then I j adjust. I have to adjust. I will either throw it out or I make an adjustment to it. So and so Joe Lewis was exactly the same way. So I, I guess as in personalities that we just relate like that, I can think in that type of line. Um, it's like when I sit there and teach, I'm a very step oriented person, you sure. know, step one, step two, step three. And this is our end result here is where we want to be able to get to Bruce Lee innovator. Yeah. A man above him. You know, I heard 
you know, as someone was telling, I think it was uh, Dan Asanto at one point, he was doing an interview or talking, but he was basically saying, you know, the art of Jeet Kune Do, if Bruce Lee was still alive, it would not even look the same as when he started. Right. Reason being, he would have evolved, right. you know, absolutely. And this is how the martial arts evolved. I've sat there and really thought about this sometimes. And, uh, you know, just think about the martial arts as uh, uh, back in, you know, 400, 500 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. starting back then, why it looks so much different nowadays. Sure. Size of people, yeah. different weapons, um, things uh, going on, not everybody uh, expressing different ideas. I mean, uh, you know, you're not fighting on horseback anymore. Right. I'm not worried about a samurai sword or a spear coming at me, you know, you know, now you're worried about, you know, either a gun or a, a beer bottle coming at you or something in that type of manner. So it had to evolve into something a little bit different to be able to defend yourself, you know. Um, remember back when Bruce Lee was took away from you know, the low, deep horse stance, and he started putting footwork into the thing. I mean, that was blasphemy. You can't do that, <laughs> you know. But it's common knowledge nowadays, yeah. you know. And the way some martial arts evolved is this. Someone's going to do something for a bit. People are going to laugh at it, and they're going to make fun of it. Then they're going to start imitating it. <laughs> and then once, say, a move comes out, People like, well, they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't, ha, ha, ha. But the move starts working. Right. Then eventually, they start using that move. More people start using it. Then a counter comes to that. Yeah. And that means a whole new other move was evolved. Right. And then blah, 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 blah. And this is the way it kind of comes up and it evolves. And it hasn't stopped. <laughs> you know? I mean, just as a thing. I mean, I'm just going to use this as a reference. Um, but you take like the UFC from day one to now, it sure. doesn't even look the same. Nope. Not, Not even different. the same. The fighters have just evolved to another level, yep. you know. But it's because they've took techniques, learned how to put stuff together, and then counter techniques and so on and so forth, new training ideas yep. and stuff, and exploded. And we're not done yet. Nope. <laughs> you know? No. Nope. 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 It'll never <laughs> stop. And that's, yeah. that's some of the fun of it. Yes, absolutely. Do you have any favorite martial arts movies? Movies? Oh, geez. I mean, there's so many. It's just, it's a, what a, some that pop in my head, like Enter the Dragon, uh, Way of the Dragon, The Last Dragon, any dragon movie. How's that? <laughs> um, you know, here's a, uh, The Big Brawl, you know, from Jackie Chan. Mm. You know, that, that, that was a good one. You know what I really loved when I was a kid? Saturdays at 1 o'clock, Kung Fu Theater. <laughs> I love that. This is a child. I always look forward to be able to, you know, see that, you yeah. know, in the afternoon. It was, it was, uh, it was good. So uh, I enjoy any martial arts movie, you sure. know, per se. You know, um, it doesn't even have to be a good movie. <laughs> I just yeah. like watching the action and stuff. I actually look at the fight scenes and say, those are good fight scenes. Yeah. So that I enjoy that fight scenes. A prime example, like a. In the early years of Steven Seagal, I really enjoyed his stuff, but sure. then it just kind of evolved into something I did never really liked, you know. Yeah. But recently, like Jason Statham, now I really love his stuff. You know, he keeps popping up. He does. He, uh, well, I like his stuff. I like uh, Michael J. White. He's another yeah. good. Yeah, he puts out um, as in good, clean martial arts skill. You know, as I sit to be able to do this, and he's I mean, a really good guy too. Really really respectable he's good friends with mike conroy my coach oh, you cool. know? i've never personally got to meet him but um you know i know they interact a lot Maybe he goes to his get studio. him up here for a seminar yeah you never know yeah 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 that'd be that'd be good so i don't know it's it's like i said i enjoy a movie one thing i look for a movie is good clean i don't like the camera right next to it because where you can't see nothing i like it panned out so i can right. see what's going on where you, you can know? tell that they're legitimate martial artists exactly. and not you yeah. know a couple stunt doubles <laughs> a lot of editing <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that's what way is i take any movie just as long as it has some pretty good fight scenes <laughs> how about books any martial arts books that books i mean not martial arts per se um i'm Books for me, well, which is probably you're going to know this now. Anything that has to do with like psychology, sports psychology mm -hmm. type stuff, you know, why? Because it molds your mind. I just sure. love that type of stuff, you know. I feel the more control you're of your mind yeah. and you understand how it works, 
when you get put in different situations and stuff like that, you can control it better. Just think about the ring. The more you can actually calm your I have three things when you're happy when you're in the ring. You, you, um, emotional calmness, yep. mental clarity, yep. and physical energy. Mm. So when I say emotional calmness and mental clarity, those two go together. You've got to be able to control them and just, and you've got to have that mental clarity where your mind can actually just relax and not a thousand things going through it, sure. you know? And it, it, it's weird, it's funny, just quoting a movie like The Last Samurai. It's one thing I absolutely love, which I've always talked about, and I bring this up to the students when I sit there and say, when you're in the ring, when uh, Tom Cruise was fighting the, you know, the master at that point, he says, you know, he kept hitting him, he said, too many minds, too many minds. Mm. That means he was thinking about too much, you know? He said, you have gotta just have that mental clarity so you let your body react. Rely on your training. It will come out if you let it, <laughs> you know? And then uh, uh, at that point, that's knowing you've reached that point where everything is locked in, mm. you know? But a lot of times we hold ourselves back because of that. <laughs> mm. So any books that have to do with that type of stuff, I'm, I'm on it, <laughs> you know? So cool. <clears throat> well, now it's kind of your chance to, to frame where we're gonna go. Um, you have any goals? Oh, many of goals. I mean, I'm just constant. That's the, that's a, I, I always sit there and say, uh, your goals give you the pain, I, excuse me, is uh, your goals give you the purpose of pain. <laughs> you know, like you that. really think about it. It's like, you know, when I go into the dojo and I'm sweating and my muscles are burning and all that type of stuff, it's like, what am I doing this for? Well, right. this is my purpose. So yeah. I'm putting up with that because of this. So again, so think about that, you know, you're, uh, you know, your goals gives your pain a purpose. That's what you're looking at, you know, in that sense. But there's many things I'm trying to achieve. Um, there's, uh, as in um, getting back because of this arm injury back into the, the big scheme of things. I'm looking to hit the national circuit again, be able to do that, um, uh, which is good. We've, you know, the Mike Conroy, which is a coach, we've actually almost pretty much uh, formed another sponsor to be able to do that. I'm not allowed to say the name yet, <laughs> but um, that's in the works right now. Another goals is, of course, I'm still evolu evolving in my body. You know, uh, I'm getting to the point where, you know, I'm a competitor, but I'm also an instructor. Yep. And as we talked about earlier about my legacy is I'm starting to build that too. I feel part of my job as being a martial arts is to share my knowledge with other people too sure. and to have them experience the same things I did. Yeah. And so I've actually started doing, I've started another little brand of stuff off from my, you know, uh, Shaolin Kempo Karate, the Vlaris things, which I call Freddie Little Pan's uh, Ultimate Edge Sport Fight Training. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm training people. I have people that come up from different areas and stuff privately. And then I've been putting on um, certain seminars, which my next one is going to be June 6th um, here at my martial arts studio from 1 to 4. Okay, this um, won't quite make it out before that. Excuse like, me. This, uh, this won't get released. That's fine. <laughs> but, um, you know, listeners can know that, that the next time you have one of those, we'll certainly... Okay. Promote that through our channel. So yep. if they're interested, they, they can take advantage. Sure. You know, so people that are looking to get into the sport aspect of things, I'm here to help you. I mean, I want to give you the same experiences I be able to do, you know, in this area and be able instead, you know, I had to travel hours upon hours upon hours and all over the United States to be able to gain the knowledge I had because I had to sort out the people to be able to do this. Sure. But now, you know, the great thing is, is I've done that legwork. I'm sitting here in Barrie, Vermont, and the people that want to experience that same type of knowledge, you don't have to do that, sure. you know? So um, I, my goal is, is to put on these seminars and train people, and I can do it privately where everybody wants to be able to do that also, you know, to get them up to that next level and uh, try to help them achieve their uh, goals also. Cool. So that's one of my, you know, most goals, of course, is to build my school and to, you know, influence more people. You know, that's always been a, a, an underlining goal with everything I do, right. of course. But, uh, um, yeah, those are the things that are in the works right now is trying to get that brand out there a little bit more, get that exposure out, and, you know, let more people know. Awesome. Yeah. So 
promote yourself. You know, um, you mentioned some things that you've got going on now with the, the seminars and everything, but um, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Any sponsors or? Uh, well, I mean, <gasps> as in promote myself, I mean, I'm here at Valari's Martial Arts Studios here in Barrie, Vermont, you know, 479-802-479-0661. You know, if you're interested in martial arts classes or, you know, um, um, any, uh, we also offer, you know, physical fitness classes also that we'll be able to do the, um, you know, I, as in promoting myself, I guess I'm not the biggest person. I try to stay pretty humble. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, kind of always been in the shadows because I just don't do it for the limelight. I do it for myself, you know, in that type of stuff. And, uh, but you know, I love teaching and uh if anybody you know wants to experience it even come on in i'd love to have them cool mm. great and of course we'll you know link to your facebook page and, and anything else that's relevant in the show notes sure sure on the website um so one last thing any parting advice any i mean you, you threw out a lot of great stuff but anything you want to end on uh parting advice you mean for like people or yeah. and i don't uh you know play confucius for a moment well uh parting advice you know what? The word that comes in my mind I keep thinking about is consistency. Okay. That's the thing. You know, it's like, uh, as we talked about a little bit about my stories of me again, getting put down and getting put up, there's one thing that has been in my life is consistency mm. in the sense where um, I didn't abandon anything in the sense I, every day was a new day and say, what am I going to accomplish today? You know, you really think about this skill, anything like that. It's a sum of all your efforts that's done on a daily basis. You really think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something I do once in a while and then I gain all this skill or something I do when I feel like it. That's when I gain a little skill. You know, it's the consistency of doing something when you actually don't feel like doing it. That's the most important mm -hmm. time. You know, um, that's the... You know, it's like the true word of commitment. You know, if when you make a commitment to yourself, commitment means that you stay loyal to that word, even though you're not in the same mood when you made it. You know what I mean about yeah. that? Okay. So it's like, I said, yeah, I want to be a world champion. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. I'm all motivated. And then today you're sore and you're tired and you go, okay, I'll train tomorrow. No, that wasn't the commitment you made. You go right back in that gym and you stay true to your goals and you do what you're supposed to be doing. That is not part of the plan. <laughs> so again, consistency. That's where it is. You know what? And I don't care if it's a martial arts. I don't care if it's a job. I don't care if it's a hobby. I don't care what it's anything. Consistency is the key of you to be able to be successful at whatever you want to do. You know, think about school. You know, we don't send our kids to school once in a while. <laughs> right. You know, they're successful in school because of what they do day in and day out. Right, right. No different than anybody, anything else. You know, you just got to put it in perspective. <laughs> There's your parting words. <laughs> I, I won't even try and add anything on to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Master Freddie, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to me and, and being here on Whistle Peak Martial Arts Radio. Oh, it's my pleasure. I hope it was worthwhile. Absolutely. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to episode 13 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. A big thank you to Master LePan for giving up some of his time to be on the show today. Please subscribe to the show so you never miss one of our weekly episodes. If you could help us out by leaving a five-star review on Stitcher, iTunes, or wherever you download your podcasts, it would really help us out. Those reviews help newcomers find the show in the vast listings that are online podcasts. You can check out the show notes with links to everything we talked about today at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're there, if you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the guest form. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about the great products we make at Whistlekick, please check us out at whistlekick.com. And don't forget that coupon for 30% off, Podcast One. That's Podcast and the number one, which is only good for a couple more days through the end of June 2015. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.